Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University. And this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. This is part two of a, a tutorial, well, another tutorial, a, a drawing that we're doing of our cubes. And it's uh, using a high horizon line. It says two cubic modules if you want to do both, but uh, the only required one is just the one. And, um, and yeah, again, again, this is part two, so make sure you see part one if you happen to come to this one first. Okay. Um, so just a quick recap of what we did in the other part. Um, we went over uh, the various options that we can do um, this, this assignment. And the, the, the first option is to download two sheets, uh, print them up, splice them together so that they match and then draw directly on this, okay? And that's what this second part will also be. Um, Another option, actually, if you can't print, is to uh, look at this information sheet and replicate the information. So rebuilding it again by taping two sheets, um, large sheet, as you can see, this is a small version, but you would need to make it big. Um, the slight difference between one and the other is that in this first one, which is actually very good for just drawing one, is that we're looking at the, at the cube which would be here, this cube is a little bigger. Um, it's three inches in the drawing. We're looking at the very, uh, we're positioned straight in front of the, um, of that edge of the cube, okay? Like that. Whereas in this other version, if you want to build it from scratch, uh, the station point is located a little bit further to the left so that you get a more balanced view of the two cubes. And that is if you want to do them both, okay? You can also just do one with this view um, and it will be, uh, well, this part will be a little more compressed, okay? And that's because, again, depending on where you put yourself, you know, like imagine if you're here, right? And you're looking this way, you would have a completely different view and this would be even more, more distorted. In this setting, you can see this cube on the left is a little bit stretched. So that's the option. And then there is a third option, which I'll record this afternoon, which is actually a, a hybrid tool and freehand. We're just gonna use a straight edge. So yeah, we, in the morning, because you can, you can draw directly on this, this part won't be drawn, but this part will already be, although you might not use it, um, but just draw directly here drawing the shape of your cube at the top with the lines, you know, just to have. Um, <clears throat> and then the first step is to build the uh, wireframe of your cube, right? Um, yeah, just as a recap again, we built that by um, constructing it. And for that, you should see the tutorial, the two point tutorial, um, you know, finding the vanishing points, projecting down from the edges, coming down straight from the picture plane to find these edges. So that once we have the, the wireframe, let's say of the actual cube without, without your design, um, then we can move in to do, uh, to do the inside. And so in the, in the first part, what I did was I continued freehand and now I'm gonna do it um, actually with the tools. Um, now this is already completed, so refer to that video. But what I did was I first did the first part in the front, which is easier by constructing these various grids, okay? And then to do the back, which was a little harder because everything starts to get overlapping, I did it this way. I did another tracing paper. And then, um, I did that, but because now, instead of looking from the outside, like in our sequence, we're looking at it inside. What I did was I, I flipped this open like this and I created a kind of a fold out version. Of my cube in perspective. Okay, in other words, I replicated that sequence by, by taking the back 
and flipping it open like that. Literally as if I was opening it like it's a, it's a door or something. Um, and that made me then easier, you know, it made me easy. It was easier than to, to copy that sequence straight out here, even though this is distorted as it, as it is in perspective. Once I did that, I flipped it back, I put it underneath, I taped it all. Um, and then I said, let's just now connect all the lines to the center and not worry about what the cube will look like. In other words, just draw all your lines like I have in this cube here, because it's hard to visualize. Once you draw them all, then take yet another piece of trace and finish it um, by, let's see if I can find it by kind of doing, you know, trial and error a little bit, right? And then you, you know, you draw what's in front and then you draw what's in back. And if you make a mistake, it's easier. So now that I have this, it's easier now to do the final, you know, do the actual construction because I know what I'm looking, what I'm looking towards, okay? So I'll, I'll do that now. And um, what I'll do because um, I think it will be more, better for the video if I if I get a little closer. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in a little bit. Just keep in mind that every time I'm doing horizontals, um, I'll be going to the two vanishing points, okay? Just keep that in mind. So, um, oh, and what I said was that when, when you try to solve it, right? When you try to figure this out, that is definitely the time to look at your cube um, Let's see, to look at your cube and literally look at it and try to match it. And now imagine that you're looking at your cube, closing one eye, always close one eye, uh, put it in front of you, trying to match the, the orientation. And because like parts like that, you know, how exactly does that go? And well, you can actually pretty much match it, right? I mean, you can, well, Let's see, yeah, it's more like that, there you go. So now the camera is my eye, right? And that's the nice thing about this perspective that it does match the camera. Whereas before in the axonometric, uh, the camera always is in perspective, no matter what, right? So, so I can put away all these, um, but I will, I will keep this tape because this is a good, I will actually um, cut it and hinge it so that it's really obvious what we did there. For a moment. Okay. So once again, what this is, is opening up the back of the cube so that then I can, so that I could draw it easily the way it is on the outside and then flip it back so I can see, I can see how the shape will be, okay. Um, I'm just gonna keep that one just as a reference. This one perhaps there. Yeah, and literally this is really what you could do, which is just have all these references around. So it makes it really, really easy. And I always like to say, but I, the psychologist said, it, your brain doesn't really like to think if you think about it. Uh, that sounds funny, but it really likes to just do things automatically. So if I know that that's what I'm looking, what I need to get, well, I don't have to think about it, okay? It is what it is. Now I'm just going to do it. Um, so yeah. So once again, I'm, I really don't need to do any more of this construction. I just need to refer to the vanishing points because diagonals follow perspective, just like anything else in the in your in your design. So as I said, you don't need to do the construction because you can draw you can draw diagonals. So what I'll do now is I'll. I'll just draw a diagonal 
on the face of the cube. Um, the other thing I can do is also bring over these splits, okay, these dimensions, because um, because again, those are in the uh, in the picture plane. They're touching, so they're real. Um, I can just pick them up directly like this. here and that that will actually be helpful in fact what i'll do now is i'll even speed up even further than what i did it with the tracing paper because what now that i have these these divisions um it's like the floor on the previous drawings that we did once we did those lines you just need one diagonal and that will give you all the other spots okay so um so these are equal divisions Let's just go straight to the two vanishing points now from that from that edge. And um, like this. And once I finish the two front ones, I'll definitely use tracing paper to do the two back ones because um, because that will be more more clear. Um, we might not have time to do the entire thing now, but um, the process will be the same for all sides. So you can um, you can refer again to the first part for the for the sequence. Okay, I had already drawn the diagonal here, so you can see now I'm going to be a little neat, and I'm just going to make because this diagonal cuts. Wait, did I do it right? Yeah. Um, a little bit of a optical illusion there. Um, the goal is to get once again a progression that's kind of like this, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit, where things get bigger and bigger in the front. Okay, I'll do another diagonal on the left side. On this side. Okay, and where it crosses those horizontals. I get my other my other divisions, okay? And if you have different color pencils, that, that could help, you know, to keep things separate. I'm gonna move this for a moment. So now these are all vertical, just like to create our grid, okay? Uh, at any time, if this gets too complicated, just take a piece of tracing paper on top and just keep drawing on the tracing paper so that you can hide um, maybe the parts that you don't want to see that you you know that are distracting you. Yeah, this came out pretty good. Okay, so now I I noticed that if you do these little dots, it really the planes really pop and you can really see them separate. Um, and so let's just throw those. And now I'm just gonna draw my first two, okay? Which were these two on this side, right? Um, so I could use, when I use a color, the trouble is my pencils are not very sharp, um, but this might help. So yeah, why don't I, why don't I do it in color? Why not? Since we have to do the final again yet on another trace. Um, so let's replicate that. I'm just gonna draw right on top. And try not to make a mistake because even though it's pencil, be a little harder too. Yeah, this this helps, right? Different colors. Now I have to go. Yeah, just just uh, think of battleship again. Like that now I do the second part on the other side. So I have to go two down and, I mean one down and two across. Uh, then two up.
um, one down, one across, and one across. Yeah, definitely, I think definitely uh, using maybe a colored pencil, but you have to sharpen it really well um, might help, okay? Because I could even do, just because it's neat, I could even do now the bottom of the cube to get, to start giving it a little body, right? Um, Okay, before I forget, I'm gonna do the center of the cube. Remember how we did that? We connected opposite corners of the cube, okay? Uh, that's the best way because you, you're using the, you know, the longest. I'm gonna do a cross in the middle there. Again, opposite corners. Um, like this. And join the other line light so that I, re if I make a mistake, I can check. Did I really go to the opposite corners? Yes, I did. Okay, so that's my corner there. I'll do it a diff different color. I'm, I'm going to make my center green. Although it looks black probably on the video. Um, because I know I need to go there at some point, right? But before I do it, I'm going to do now the other parts. Um, and the other parts, um, this will help me, but I think I'll put a piece of tracing paper because it's just, yeah, it's easier, right? There's too many lines. So, it's up to you, it's up, you know, how, confident or how, you know, what's the word? Courageous is a little too extreme a word, but you know, how a challenge you wanna be, you know, and say, okay, I'm just gonna do it all, all in the same thing, all with the same pencil, no different colors, which you can always use later. Um, but this will help me now. Okay, and so now I need to draw the grid again, right? So the grid is um, these two, right? And, and, and this helps, you see, even just like a little bit of opacity, right? Like in Photoshop, if you set your the opacity of the layer below or above, whatever, differently, you can you can uh, focus on just something without losing completely the other, right? Um, it's pretty amazing, actually, I have to say. Um, okay. And you can always do this too, and it becomes even more clear, right? In fact, I should tape it only on one side, like an inch. Oops. Like this, okay? So very quickly now, because I have information that already tells me what I need to do. Um, if you if you notice, these grids already go. Well, let's do something else. Let's just make the little dots here. Not that we need them anymore, but again, it just helps us to make those planes a little more visible. Um, because I've already drawn these lines, these divisions here and here are already, already there. So um, I can just pick them up from there. I just have to be careful, make sure I got the right ones. Maybe I'll do a little marking like that. And here too. One, two, and three. And now that I have those spots, I go across, I grow, I go the other way, right? Um, I'm just gonna draw on the on the thing. I'm not gonna go all the way. So I might be able to actually finish this. Now I need the longer. Um, so now these spots here should match these spots here as I connect them to the vanishing point, which I realize you can't see anymore, but that's okay. 
Yeah, and they do. So that's one. Um, in the first part of this, in the video part one, I, I really emphasized how um, you want to make sure that you highlight the vanishing points so that you that, so that you don't go to the wrong spot. Okay. Okay. So now you could even do this if you want to be real quick, so it's more visible. Uh, we draw a diagonal. Same same deal, right? We draw a diagonal, and it will give us the nice divisions. Just have to be careful there. Okay. And once I have this grid, I could do the process of doing kind of the bottle shape things, but I don't need to anymore because I already did the uh, the sketch, right? The sketch on the you know freehand earlier. So all the verticals stay vertical. That's my nice grid from the back. Okay. Um, so we're basically now, because we're going around, we're basically reconnecting to this spot, right? Which would be which would actually be here. But again, I don't want to think it's, I'm already getting confused, right? So instead of thinking, I just go back to my other sketch and say, oh, okay, that's, that's this guy right here. Look, I can actually open it the other way and see what it looks like inside without having this layer in front. That's fantastic. I'm just going to copy that. How about that? There's no more less thinking than that. Um, which I like, and I'm gonna use uh, the red pencil, right? We use the red pencil. Yeah. So let's just copy that. Okay, let's just copy that pattern over here. Again, you'll have to look at the other video to see how we got that. Um, okay. Let's see. Copying is a good thing <laughs> sometimes, right? It's a very good thing. Okay. And there we go. So you will have to decide, by the way, you know, which, which view you think is ideal for your cubes, you know, which view is it going to give you a better, because, you know, if you put, if it's very tall in one corner and you put that in the front, I don't know, then it's going to block everything else. So uh, whatever you do, make sure that it is the symmetrical view, right? It's the view where when you split the cube, it's going to be the same as opposed to like, you see, that's different one side on the left side and on the right. Whereas this is symmetrical. So make sure you, you stick to that. Um, to that little useful thing to be able to visualize the perspective. Okay, oops, that's longer. All right, okay, so there we go. darken them a little bit for, for the video really, but. Okay, there we go. So now because, um, because the one, you know, the layer underneath is a little hard to see because it's, you know, there's this in between. What I'll do is I'll just redraw I'll redraw these again on top here so I can see it a little better, okay? And now I'll have all the information. And so now actually what I'll do, I'll zoom in even further. So now that it's zoomed in even further, it will be a little clearer. Um, 
of course I didn't think about the fact that not the camera is in the way. <laughs> oh well, um, I'll try to work around it. <laughs> Can't get to it now because it's it's in my face. Um, anyway, I'm gonna draw the front because um, so, but again. Here's what I'm talking about in terms of not thinking. Don't worry about it. Just draw every single possible line um, as if it were really, truly in X-ray, right? Oops. This is moving too much. Wait. Oh, no. OK. Yeah, I see. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. And I'm, I have to not think because who cares what it looks like? We'll, we'll figure it out later, right? Um, so. Okay, now I have my thread, right? Going around, completely around. I'll, I'll pull out a little bit just because, um, you know, now I've drawn the entire drawing going around. And, and again, what I want now is to draw all the lines, like as if it was, as if it was an X-ray without worrying about it. We'll worry about this later, okay? So don't think, just, just do it. Um, Remember the center is right there, right? So I'm just going to now, maybe I'll use a different color. Uh, maybe I'll use, um, I'll use maybe, a, maybe a slightly different color, maybe orange. Yeah, there we go. Actually what I used here was purple. I'll use purple so that we keep, well, you yeah, use blue for the outside, doesn't matter. Okay, so, draw all the lines really uh in fact what i'll do to make it obvious is i'm gonna draw the center again and i'm gonna stick something underneath so that it's really clean i mean of course the drawing like this is going to be beautiful right because it is like x-ray but um and that's why you want to keep the construction, right? Because that's that's very nice to have. And it tells you if you did it right. Now, because we have seen this shape, I've seen it, I've drawn it many times, you know, I kind of like, okay, well, I know exactly what it's going to look like. But when you're doing years, you'll see it's more, um, you know, kind of a discovery, right? So again, notice that every time I go through the center, from one point, I'm going to hit the opposite point on the cube, OK? Um, and just to show you that now I'm not thinking, I'll even do this point. If you recall, you know, that's the point that I don't really need. It's this one right here, right? But why don't I just do it just because Okay, so a few more and then we'll be close to be done. Okay. Always going to the center from opposite points. Okay, did I miss anyone here? One more. Okay, I think I got them all. Uh, no, nope, I'm missing one right here. Okay, so I just drew basically this guy, right? I just drew this entire thing like this. Now that's out of focus, but um, like that somewhat, yeah, roughly, okay? 
And so now that I, I'm not thinking, now I go back and say, well, okay, now which lines? And I would take tracing paper and I would figure it out. But because I had done it before in sketch form, I don't have to, again, figure it out a second time. I can just now finish it. So to do that, I'll just take yet another piece of trace and I'll simply copy this, okay? And for that, um, you will do the final drawing um, like this, okay, tracing, tracing. Uh, normally you would do the final drawing like this on a nicer, uh, it's called vellum paper, which is like high quality, uh, very strong, uh, but that you don't have that. So tracing paper is, in, is good, is good enough. So what you want to do now is you want to frame it, okay? You want to frame your drawing um, so that it is, um, you know, nicely, nicely laid out, right? Um, so this would be, you know, you're just going to do this final one and then that final one showing. And I do that. Uh, I'm assuming now that I'm properly straightening it, you know, putting it straight, splitting, you know, splitting the difference top and bottom more or less. Um, just put a piece of paper. So the beauty again of having tracing paper doing all this, all the brunt work before, brunt, grunt, grunt work before is that now I don't have to think. Now I just copy that, okay. Um, I don't need this anymore, right? Because it's all solved. So I'll just I'll just keep that there. And we're almost on our way. Just focus. I need to do a couple of lines first so that I can see it in order to focus. Um, okay, for the video, I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use a mark. I mean, a a, a, a Prismacolor colored pencil, okay? Just because it's, it's stronger and really visible, okay? For your drawing, just use the usual, okay? Just use the mechanical pencil, all right? So let me just draw a couple of, couple of lines so I can focus it. There we go. Okay, now I take a deep breath because now it's fun, right? Now it's just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> well, I could still make a mistake, but it would be silly, right? If I make a mistake now because I know exactly what I need to, what I need to draw and I'm just gonna do that. And, but I still, you know, I still start from the front, right? Because that's, that's the sure thing. Whatever is in front is, is visible, whatever is in the back, well, something might be hiding, something might be you know, um, cut off. So that's it. Now I could just tell a story, but I have to be careful because I'm not good at doing two things at once. Um, although they say, you know, regarding working memory and memory in general, you can do two things at once if one is more visual and the other is more verbal, although that can get tricky too. This guy, Mr. Memory, an English British guy who uh, tells a story that he was listening to football, I think on highway one, <laughs> you know, lots of curves and dangerous, especially if you're going south because you're on the side of the road that's on the, on the cliff, on the hill, said that he was listening to the, uh, to the football game and he got so in, you know into it and he was trying to and he was visualizing the plays that they were being described that he had to pull off the road because he felt he was gonna you know veer off the road and not pay attention to the road um and the same thing with me now if i talk too much i'm almost afraid that i'll make a mistake so i'll stop there for a moment and try to finish it without making a mistake, okay? Um, why don't I just look at my model? There we go. 
Always a good thing to do that. Whoa, that line is too thick. Okay, almost there. Again, notice how I'm drawing. This is true even if you use the mechanical pencil. I'm drawing from the corners in instead of doing the entire line because that gives me a nice beginning and end. I have more control over, over it. Okay, now what's happening here? Let me look at the model again. Right there. There. And amazingly, I might even have the whole cube finished. Where are you? There we go. Oh, I'm missing something, right? See, it, it, when, you, when you do that, it immediately pops. That's like, oh. Um, okay, here's a little trick. I could finish that line that's missing now. But because I don't have the other point, my line might not be like really, really like going in the right spot. So actually, I'm going to go back and, and use that reference that's hidden uh, to make sure that it's really going into the into the center in the right way. There we go. Now that matches. Okay, beautiful. Um, I'm going to quickly draw the top just because we have to do that too, and then we'll be done. Okay. So I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, and I'll finish it. Um, oh, yeah. Just because it's nice to draw really what your cube looks like. You know, your cube may have all the possible lines. In my case, um, oh, also notice how. I did skip this line, remember? That was the line that was part of my cube um, here. Okay, it was this line that I didn't need here. Okay. So I don't need I don't need to draw it here either. Okay, yeah. So this is just, you know, this is just context really, right? To show what your um what your cube looks like from the, from above. Okay, I hope I remember. So once again, this won't be due until, oops, it's there, until, um, not next week, but the, the following week. I'll have it try to do it before the final drawing, which we'll do next week, because it's the same process. And if you try to do them at once together, then you don't gain the practice from this particular drawing, right? Um, okay, so that's your final nice clean drawing, you will have the borders, you'll have the title block. So make sure that this is in fact vertical, okay? Vertical format. Um, so here, let's just finish the cube with a nice, nice picture of this. And not the actual cube, which again is a reminder we had made it of plexiglass so that we could show how we should draw everything without thinking um, how it might look like. And then that's the view, right? Let's see if I can align it. That's like that, roughly. Yes, actually, more like this. Okay, so that's it. This concludes the second part.